We're doing some clarinet voicing and overtones today. Hi, welcome to Woodwind Ninja. If you don't know me, my name is Jay. And today, here on Woodwind Ninja, we're going to go over some ideas and some concepts about voicing and overtones and how they work together, how they're going to impact your sound, your articulation, uh, your ability to do just about everything on the clarinet. So let's jump in. The first thing we need to do is define those two words, overtone and voicing. Now, voicing is something that you've been doing since you've been playing the clarinet. You just never thought of it that way. Or maybe you have. And Anyway. We won't get in the weeds on that, but you've been doing it the whole time. The first time you ever put the clarinet in your mouth, you voiced. Did you mean to? Uh, doesn't matter, because you did. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Voicing is essentially how we use our voice when we play the clarinet. Do you think a lot about your voice? I don't, until I started making YouTube videos, and I had to hear it so much. Uh, we don't really think about our voice. If we want to make it low, it can go low. If we want to make it high, it goes high. We don't think about how to do that. We just think about where we want our voice to be, and then we put it there. Or up here. It doesn't really take a lot of thinking on our part. And clarinet voicing is largely the same way. I mean, if you were going to talk about it really, really generally. It has to do with, some people call it our throat, but it's not our throat because that's what we put food in. Uh, it's more of our larynx, our voice box, all that, our tongue, the, uh, the, uh, the, what's called the soft palate of the top of our mouth. Uh, it has to do with our jaw. It has to do with our embouchure. It's all, it's all interrelated stuff. Uh, it's all part of a big uh, thing we would call voicing. And now what voicing does is it shows you where uh, you are on the clarinet. Uh, I'll make a whole video about it someday. It's going to be great. But if you play just your mouthpiece, you're going to learn a lot about your voicing. Let's check it out. That should be a C. Not our C, but a piano C. That's what it should be. I wonder if it is. Let's check it out. Here's how you check it out. You play a high D on the clarinet. That yeah, was in the ballpark. Okay, so that's where we want to be. In the neighborhood of a C. I'll tell you what, stop the video just for now, get your mouthpiece out, give it a try, see where you are. That's going to really tell you a lot about where your voicing is. Some people voice lower. And there are good reasons to voice lower. Uh, a lot of different styles of music would require that. Uh, your kind of standard orchestra-related clarinet playing, which is what you might do in your school band, or in, definitely in an orchestra, or if you're playing a commercial like a Broadway show or something like that, we are generally playing what I would consider a more traditional, <laughs> these, these terms are a little bit antiquated, but a, but a, a sort of Western classical style. Uh, if you're playing like a New Orleans uh, jazz clarinet, definitely don't voice that high. It's not going to work that well for you. Uh, it does limit the flexibility a little bit, but that's whatever. That's like a, it's a wormhole that's going to require more than one video. And I'm going to make it. But uh, so what we want now uh, to get our voicing, this is essentially how to get into the upper register smoothly on the clarinet. That's what this is about. This isn't about essentially ethnic clarinet styles or or. or from around the world, or this is not about playing jazz clarinet. This is about playing uh, with, a, with a normal, oh God, normal to me. <laughs> That's so wrong. Anyway, uh, what, what would somebody would consider an orchestral clarinet sound? Uh, in any case, I got to get myself out of that conversation because there's a lot of words in there that can get you in trouble. In any case, uh, so he, my point is, let's go back to my point. Good God. Okay, so the point is, is where we want our mouthpiece to be to make our clarinets work in the way we probably want it to work. Uh, so that's a good indicator right there. Uh, I'll make another video about this too, but try articulating there too.
That'll tell you something about your clarinet and where it is playing. How does that work uh, in terms of voicing and overtones? Well, this means your voicing is high, uh, which is, for what we're talking about today, good. We're going to put the clarinet back together, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to do notes that we know really, really well. The register these notes are in is called the Shalomo register. That's the register with no register key. Let's start with one we know well, C. <laughs> Terrific. Now, that C, we, we get some information from how we play that C, not a lot. If we press the register key, it should jump up without any reservation to a high G. Well, not really a high G, a clarion G. Now this clarion G, and just in case you've never heard that term before, I'll give you the whole thing. The clarinet has three basic registers. One is the Shalomo register, no register key. Then comes the clarion register, which is the register that you press the register key. And then above that, above high C, when we have our first finger up for those notes, that's called the altissimo register. So there's three distinct registers on the clarinet. And the way that they work together can give us a lot of information about how to get control over our sound, how to get control over our articulation, and everything that we might want to do on the clarinet. It's really terrific. So let's, let's use this oddity in the clarinet to our advantage. So we're going to play that C. And then we're going to go up to a G. I'm going to put my metronome on. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to play half notes. We're going to play two half notes and then a whole note. The two half notes are going to be played normally. The whole note, we're not going to use our register key. We're going to play a clarion G with no register key. Check it out. So when I play a C and then go up to a G and then let go of my register key, it stays a G. And that is then which when you are playing that note with no register key, let me turn this off just for a second. You are playing what's called an overtone. An overtone, let's define that, is like a secret little unheard note pitch that's within the spectrum of notes uh, that resonate when you play. You can see this on a guitar or a piano, actually anything with a string. If you let that, if you pluck that string, hammer that string, whatever mechanism you use to make that string vibrate, you can see it vibrates from beginning to end, then it vibrates in half, and then in half, and then in half, and then in half, and then in half. It's called the overtone series. And it's a, it's a, it's a cool thing. Here's the incredibly cool thing. The clarinet m is missing every other overtone. For example, just as a small aside, if you were to play that fingering on the flute, three fingers, it's a G. Then if you go up, one octave, also a G, same fingering, G, G. Clarinet, it's a C on the bottom, register key, G, because we are missing every other overtone. It's what makes the clarinet sound like a clarinet. Uh, again, that is to dive deeply into, uh, to dive deeply into that is another, another video entirely. All right, so, so what we're doing is we're playing Shalomo, Clarion, and then Overtone. Let's do it again. And by the way, the music for this is on my website, woodwindninja.com. I will leave a link in the description. One, two, three, and... And then that, you know, I'm just going to answer a question that hasn't been asked. I'll ask it to myself. So, 
Jay, you're telling me if I play a clarion note and let the register key go, my clarinet should not go down to the lower note? Yes. It should not. That's true. That is a true statement. It should not go down to the lower, the lower note. Uh, it should stay up where it is. Conversely, if you play a C and press the register key by accident, it should effortlessly go up to a G. That's the nature of how this instrument works. It doesn't go down overtones that, that well. It should pop up overtones pretty well. Um, that's going to tell you if you're, if you're playing in a way that is possible to have good, clean articulation. It's going to make sure your air is moving fast enough. It's going to make sure your embouchure is right. It's going to make sure your voicing is right. Because if any of these things are off, this isn't going to work. And then from that point, if it is working, great. That means from that position is where you do your articulation. Dynamic changes. Like, we don't hold it in that position tightly, but we hold it in that position lovingly. And we play from that position, essentially, all the time. We make small adjustments, but they're not huge adjustments. And our articulation, I've always had a hard time saying that, our articulation uh, comes from that place. You move the, just the very tip of your tongue, to make that happen. And the rest of your voicing, the back of your tongue, the back of your mouth, your larynx, your voice box, all that stays the same. So let's do a few of these. We're going to play C, register key, overtone, D, register key, overtone, E, register key, overtone, F, register key, overtone. Let's do it. One, two, three, and... One, two, on D, and... One, two, on E, and... On C, oh, excuse me, on F, two, three, and. Now, did you notice, I'm sure you did, the pitch gets really bonkers on the, uh, the higher you go. That's normal. Don't try and make them the same pitch. The clarinet does not really work like that. Uh, these overtones are slightly out of tune. Another complicated thing about the clarinet. But yeah, so the overtones are going to be out of tune. Particularly uh, when we go up, and we're going to go down in a minute, and they're going to get pretty out of tune when we go down too. But don't try and fix that. That's not a, that's not a problem. Uh, so there's that. What else did I want to add? I had a thought while I was doing that. I had lots of thoughts, but now I can't remember what it was. All right, let's move down. We're going to start on C. Then we're going to do B flat. Then we're going to do A, G, F, and E. Here we go. One, two, on C, and. On B flat. Ready? And. Now on A. Now on G. Now on F. Now on B. Whoops. Now on E. Two, three, and. Four. 
So again, you noticed the further we got down, the further lower we got, the further uh, crazy the intonation got when we went to the overtone. Uh, and this is just getting into what makes a clarinet a clarinet. So there you go. Keep in mind when we're doing this, we shouldn't be making huge changes in how we're playing to do this. This should be how we play normally. This should come out of your, your, your best sound. I didn't love my sound when I went from the low E to the B. So I'm going to try and do that with my best sound. <laughs> So that was better. So this is, you know, this this definitely fits into what could be long tone practice uh, in a given practice session, for sure. A lot of times, long tones can be a little bit frustrating because what are you listening for? What are you doing? This exercise gives you direct feedback. Is it going good? Is it not going good? You can tell because it either worked or it didn't work. That's a terrific part about this exercise. So being good, clarinet health. Do your overtones. Work on your voicing. Come back. See me at Woodwind Ninja. Smash that like button. And uh, subscribe. All right. See you next time.